Large Priestess Pug of Karit, our new democratically elected ruler or something like that. Bringer of the Sea Peoples. We Well, we can't really call ourselves the Sea Peoples yet because we haven't done anything Sea People-y. We've just kind of sat on an island and have family members diddle one another constantly despite my best efforts to try and curb it. So here we are on, on Diddle Central. We will try and become a bit more uh, Sea People-y under the mighty guidance of Pug. Um, bear in mind, we do have access now, of course, to the Raiding Expedition Casas Belli, so I might just go raiding along the Greek coast today and steal uh, women and children and men and everybody, basically. Anybody who's up for it. And anybody who's up for being kidnapped, they're more than welcome on my boat. Now, I actually wanted to go raiding on Comet, seeing as they are the kind of big bad right now. Any subtle, small blows, oh dear, to to this guy would be would be pretty devastating. Apparently, we haven't got a cast his belly on him because we are, of course, more than two sea tiles away there, which is a bit of a ball ache. Um, yeah, I can't believe we can't declare war on him or go raiding because the sea is too large. So that's a little bit tragic. So we might have to uh, might have to see if we can get some other cast his belly before then. We might have to grab Cyprus just to put us within striking range. I don't know if it would really help out too much, but it is an island nation, so I'm more than happy to actually go for it. Anyway, we'll see what we can do. We might be able to reform the religion and get a few more cast spell out along, along kind of that method. Okay, so we are going to start work on, on immediately reforming the religion again. You know, as I said yesterday, this character is very much the redeemer. She is going to redeem the dynasty that has fallen massively from grace. Of course, our mother, Lassie the Anointed, and our father, Lassie's son, Toto. Both of them grand sinners. She made a religion that she then immediately broke the first and really only rule of. So we need to, we need Lassie to be the redeemer here. So we'll start work on uh, grinding out as much piety as possible. She's got the education. She's got the scribery. Um, oh, Jesus. No. Oh, hang on. This is probably a good thing, though. My courtier, if... Phanasia has been showing signs of pregnancy for some time now. Everybody thought that the father was her friend, Toto, our father and half-brother, confusingly. Uh, and now it's clear that the real father is Petty King Capanius. Oh my, what a scandal. But of course, it's not actually illegal, unlike what our family members were getting involved with. Another learning lifestyle perk. So of course, we're going to head down to profit basically immediately. How are we looking on our fur? It's 100%. So this is going to be very, very expensive no matter what. Oh, <laughs> holy shit. Um, okay, well, naturally, look, we're going to be throwing in... Why have we lost doctrines there? Our program is ritual suicide, medical purges, mustana, mo mo monasticism, our of faith, human sacrifices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tenants. But we've got... Oh, it is eight. Oh, right, 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 because that displays five per line and the other thing. Right, got it. That confused me there for a second. Now, bear in mind, when we actually get the profit... Uh, trait. That's going to half it down to 7,000. So we need a minimum of 7,000 to reform. Any after that is just going to allow us to a lot more and more things. We're not going to touch the doctrines. We're not going to touch the belief doctrines, the practice doctrines. We're not going to touch anything. It's only tenets we're, we're interested in in basically adding more on. You know, we're, we're not even going to go down the route of uh, reforming any at all. Just bringing more and more in. You know, Warmonger, uh, Struggle and Submission, Sky Burials would be a fantastic one. Pursuit of Power. Anything that gives us a bit more a bit more punch. What I want to start doing is setting up independent, as I talked about yesterday, and a lot of you guys seem on board with this idea, setting up independent kingdoms of our dynasty. So splintering other realms and putting them under our realm. Comet would have been the first option. Unfortunately, those guys are out of range, apparently, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Many of you were asking as well why the Pharaoh has 63 diplomacy. You might remember at the start, and we are playing with a mod which allows us to... I can't remember the name of the bloody mod, man. Let me go and find out a second. But we're playing with a mod called The Chosen House. Now, actually, there's been an update since I started this series. They've, they've updated the mod to, uh, with, with something called The Chosen Dynasty instead. So if you are interested, go and pick that one up. It seems like it's got a whole lot more going on for it. But this guy is the head of the Chosen House. That, of course, being Kenthap Horus. I thought that was a fun way to kind of balance things. Fun way to get some more challengers and some, some kind of enemies. Um worthy of our attention because if this guy had just been a regular old character you know we would have steamrolled him with some of the characters we've got because he is this chosen house this kind of god-given house potentially as our house is as well there he does get some pretty impressive bonuses so he's currently head of the chosen house giving him plus 10 diplomacy but everything else as far as i can tell is is more or less natural he's got from domain giving plus 20 so i'm not entirely sure what he's got in his domain giving him those bonuses pyramids perhaps um any sort of, uh, any sort of temples. Development growth renown. I have no idea what the hell is conferring a 20-point diplomacy bonus to him. Um, 
But it's something. He's, he's got something that's given him a crazy amount of bonuses. It's something in his... Is it direct domain? Just his from domain. So he could, I guess, be anything in his kingdom here. Um... But even without, you know, the chosen house set, he would still be 53 on his diplomacy score. Maybe it's because some of his dynasty members also gain some bonuses, perhaps? Let's take a look here. See, this guy's part of the chosen house. Uh, he is not actually getting any bonuses here. 42 learning. Vassal of the chosen gives him some bonuses there. Mastermind philosopher. Masterful scribe. This guy just has a lot of natural learning bonuses as well. It, we're just getting some very powerful AI characters on top of these chosen houses um so Komet is just naturally doing pretty well regardless of all the other stuff it's getting i wonder where the other chosen houses are i wonder if like like these guys are the sumerians 50 learning no they're not they've got a holy site giving them plus eight my god how is this possible 50 learning this guy's got this random npc you've got the akkadians they've already got nothing for them or akkadians depending on how you pronounce that um 44 learning there Scholarly circles, scholarship focus, astute intellectual, skilled scribes. It is almost certainly down to the fact, actually, that we've got the, um, you know, the lifestyle experience mod. And the AI have access to that as well. So this guy has theologian, hall of body, and scholar. All of which giving him a, a nice chunk of bonuses there. I wonder who the other great houses ended up being then. I think there's a way to really track them down. Man, I wish I could find out because it would be really interesting to see. I mean, obviously, they're not getting up to much important. There's like potentially, I don't know, Doria? No. 33 learning, but that's, uh, I mean, a drop in the sea compared to everybody else. New perk for the learning lifestyle as well. Okay, here we go. So that is going to give us the profit perk. So now we can reform for the only of the low, low price of about 8,000 piety. Although, to be fair, our piety is going up bloody fast because we have all those all those inherent bonuses there. That's fantastic. And because we've got the philosophy trait and the, the genius and yada, yada, yada. We're getting an incredible amount of uh, speed on this. How, how much are we getting? 42. Base is 25, plus Genius giving 30. We're getting 70% bonus on top. Yikes. So every 21 months, it's throwing another perk out away. That's insane. And we can nominate a successor. We probably should nominate a successor. But of course, they're probably not going to end up actually being our successor. We're almost certainly going to go for whoever the heir of uh, uh, King Schnauzer. I think I'm on board with King Schnauzer. Of course, it's up to the people. We are a democracy here, so if you, the comment section, would like to vote on the person you think should uh, should be voted in, I will adjust my vote accordingly, unless we die in the meantime, which, of course, I can't, unfortunately, see the future quite yet. Uh, we will, however, most likely just vote in the child, the eventual child of Amphiwastos and Pog. Mainly because, of course, he's got Herculean. We've got Genius and Beautiful. If we get very, very lucky, we can end up with a kid with all three of the best traits, and more importantly, we can consecrate the bloodline with this guy's, with this guy's kid. We will have to give him... Immortality, though. We are, we'll have to confer lichenism. So we've got to be a bit careful. And how is it we offer to join people to get people to join our house? Is it only lowborn characters, I would assume? Um, it's got like a court chaplain. Yeah, invite to join house. Right, got it. So we can invite people to join house if they're lowborn. So if we see any future, um, you know, uh, f future kind of marriage potential characters to bring into our dynasty in the future going for going for lowborn characters makes the most sense because of course if we end up dying as pug this guy might go off and remarry non-matrilineal and pass on his werewolf done and then suddenly house um Safa, Safa Kossios is gonna have the the, the the kind of power to it as well so we've got to be very careful there right let's let's build some shit we're sitting on a mountain of cash here brother let's let's get some stuff thrown down here um just everything just give me everything. I should really be upgrading, to be honest, levies more than anything else, but that's okay. Um, monastic schools for piety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go for that. All of our temples, really, I should go through all the temples in the realm and just get them upgraded. And if they haven't got temples, building temples as well would be quite helpful. Yeah, you have a temple. What have we got? We've got uh, access as a temple holding. Um, you can't upgrade the monastic schools any further, right? Temple grounds building or its upgrade. So we need to go for, we need to go for you next. Yeah, this is a good investment because if we want to reform this religion, this is the this is the quickest way to go about it, really. Everywhere from East Crete to West Crete, we have temples being built wherever we possibly can. There's a few caveats to that. These islands over here, um, uh, East Crete, sorry, those guys don't have the correct culture, which is weird because they've always been uh, Cretan. Um, we do need to go and convert those over as soon as possible so that we can, um, so that we can get some temple holdings and then we'll start with the sun and we'll, we'll, we'll move our way across. I didn't even mention it because to be honest, I didn't even notice, but we hit hundred development here. 50% levy size, 50% tax size and 15,000 supply limit. My God. Um, and are we upgrading all of these? I think I've got, 
everything going down here. Oh, we can upgrade our estate. Um, Levy's fisheries or clay pit. Doesn't really matter. We do need to start working on uh, levy size, definitely. So it might be worth, well, not necessarily levy size, but, but martial bonuses. We've gone very heavy into the economy, which, of course, is, is doing incredibly well. But if we want to get out there and be super, super aggressive, especially against Komet, we're not going to do it just with a mountain of gold. Chariots, you say? Oh, look at this. Panoply Warriors with their 196 toughness is a fucking lot. Wow. Um, give me some chariots then. So they counter archers and heavy infantry. Light chariots counter skirmishers and archers. So we go for both of those. Um, and then I want Panoply Warriors because those are incredible. What have we got so far? Aegean Macemen, heavy chariots, light chariots, Panoply Warriors, early hoplites, bowmen. Um... So, what about just some, like, swordsmen or axemen instead? They both counter spearmen. Um, it's whether you prefer... I think axemen overall are probably slightly better, aren't they? You've got 49. So, this one is 43, 42, and this one's 37, 49. I think I'm going to go for the axemen, the slightly more aggressive variant. Oh, we go for light footmen. You get a lot of terrain bonuses, but they are very, very poor by comparison. No siege engines, but of course we're probably not going to get siege engines uh, forever, or at least for a very, very, very long time. Invested heavily into the chariots and the amazement front. So that's going to give us, uh, that's going to give us quite a sizable army there. We've got 11 out of 12 on the amazement. To be honest, I probably went a little bit hard on the amazement. Let's pull a few of those back and invest a little bit, a little bit into some of these other ones just to start off with. Otherwise, we're countering one thing fairly, fairly succinctly and absolutely nothing else here. Right, I think we'll go for... I think we'll go for... Ooh, this is difficult. I guess we start heading towards Matriarch. I do like August as well, though. Diplomat didn't really come in particularly handy. Um, let's go for Groom to Rule first. Let's go for Groom to Rule. That's always a good early safe bet. Monthly party from buildings is up. What, what are we looking at now? Just get a feeling for that. 10.8 per month. And then let's go for this one. So it's going to double it. 11.1. .1. That was pathetic. That was really, really bad. <laughs> oh, there we go. Betrothal fulfilled. We are now married. With my marriage to High King Amphiwastos, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding ceremony. As well within my rights to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but I some may consider it as tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. Um, do you want the 430 gold or shall we just take the let's take the prestige, honestly? We're only a very, very low level in both uh both piety and prestige, so I think we'll focus on building that up rather than I mean Again, we don't need we don't need gold. That would just be extreme. Wow, that was fast. Um, side problem with that, of course, is that it's not going to go very far on account of him not actually being a werewolf. Oh, Labradorinthian exaltation. A paragon of unyielding asceticism. King Leontius has shown a disciplined soul. Thank you, King Leontius. Okay, I'm pregnant no more because of our immortality. So now we've got to make a big boy grown up choice. Let's see if we can if we can seduce him. No, 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 not seduce him. Uh, cancel that plot. We want to make him our soulmate. Then I'm not so against conferring our... I'm not so against conferring our werewolf blood to him if he's our soulmate. Because, of course, there are obviously massive side effects if he does betray us at that point. Let's just stay awake. We are blitzing through this. Every time I close my eyes, I see hiking and feel Wastos' face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Cloaks in shadows. I make my way to the garden outside his living quarters. My morsel is in danger. I must save him. Maybe this is where we actually confer the immortality. The sound from the struggle above is the greatest motivator I've ever known. Without careful life or limb, I hoist myself through his window and then accidentally land on him teeth first. I will never let you get into harm's way again because, my friend, you are deserving of the werewolf. 7% chance of him dying because, of course, he does have that Herculean health boost there. So if anybody's going to survive it, I believe in you. High King Amphilastos, come on. He survived it. That's not really much of a shocker, is it? Bender of the Faith seems appropriate. And then finally, we have Theologian already. That's a bloody quick turnaround. Very nice. How old is she? 25. Oh, you know what? That wasn't as quick as I thought. We just blitzed through apparently the first seven years of our life there in the blink of an eye. My God, wow. I think let's go raiding. Let's prove to these people that we mean business here. We've got Laconia to our north. Now, Laconia are pathetic. Vastly inferior. Their allies are inferior. They have nothing going for them. I think we need to show them that Kuri is is on a turning point here. It's on the cusp of, of, of war with our... My God. We can bring Lassie with us. We shouldn't because she's in the labyrinth. Same with Toto. You're both forbidden because you are interred. 
as as both a punishment and because of destiny. But everyone else is more than welcome to join us there. Right, let's do it. Raise the troops, kill them dead. Declare war. Give me some give me some raiding expedition. Of course, we can gain piety for sacrificing prisoners. So this is gonna help speed us towards reformation super super fast, depending on how lucky we get here. Get in there. Get in there as fast as we can. Capital all the way up in the hills. Unfortunately, the sea people are going to have to be land people. Very upsetting, but definitely worthwhile. Um, what do we... Uh, there's nowhere I can go to avoid this attrition then. Oh, that's okay, I don't really care. Sod it. Get in there, kill them dead. We've got a shrine constructed. 27%. Where are your troops? I'm going to assume you probably have none. Uh, are you leading, leading troops yourself? No, just kind of kicking around, huh? Fine, burn it all. Here we go, my friends. Potentially the bloodline strengthening werewolf child of destiny. The the, the true final end game of this of this fucking dynasty to create the immortal perfect man. Just like ever just like the good old times in CK2, huh? Jesus, that was fast. I blinked and it was suddenly a child. Nana's. Nana's what? Nana's Oh! Beautiful, intelligent, Herculean consecrated blood. Are we so close? Oh you shit. Okay. Right, well, it's been a long time since we've actually had to had to name a kid, huh? Let me go and Google. Uh, excuse me. Let me go and Google dog d dog breeds. Here we go. Right, all dog breeds on dogtime.com. Afador we've had. So now we get to go to Afen Hwawa. <laughs> a good strong Manoa name. Prince Afinwa. I was actually just thinking that the one thing CK3 is still really lacking is the idea of kind of blood feuds and rivalries between entire dynasties. Uh, the Game of Thrones one did obviously a great job of, uh, of implementing that. Um, and you kind of had it in, in CK2 with the Republic. Um, oh, we're doing mystical knowledge. Locked in a room, strange powders on a burning fire provided overpowering heat, smoke, and smells as I tried to feel the things that lie beyond the water of the senses. Interesting. I'll record my findings for the future, or shall we try again? Puff, puff, pass. Next, next day, bring it. Oh shit! Oh wow! I think that's the first time I've ever done that event that has actually resulted in something good. We gain wise woman. Oh cool! Oh, that's that's actually really, really good. The white boar. I am out with my retinue and can also when the road twists and takes us close to the farmlands. Start to see it once more, shimmering in the sun. The white boar. I turn to alert the others, but as soon as I turn back, the boar is already gone. 50 stress. This might be the most stressed out a character has ever been, and it's about a mythical pig. What was I talking about? Uh, what the hell are you doing, leading my armies? Uh, get out of here. Back in your back in your tomb. What the hell? Forbidden? Evidently not. Oh, unless that was Other Lassie. Um, Other Lassie isn't also a heifer, is she? And that's why I confused them all of a sudden. Um, no, doesn't look like it. She somehow escaped. She's definitely not allowed to do that. So, in base game CK2, sorry to go back to a point that I started to fit what was 20 minutes ago now. In base game CK2, of course, you had the Republic uh, rivalry system, the, the, the blood feud from that, because that was very heavily event-driven. There's no kind of... There's no, like, you know, similar to the Nemesis system you have in, in CK3, but that across the whole dynasty would be quite cool. Um, and it would allow us to build these much more dynamic stories. Like, sure, we could wipe out... We could kill this character and his children and his children's children... And the dynasty still wouldn't give a shit. It would still be a personal thing. Like, well, you might have wiped out my whole dynasty, but your diplomacy stat's quite high, so I'm indifferent to you. It, it just seems still like something that was a little bit missed there. And we're in. Ready expedition is over. Present to me your finest of... Look at this. Development is reduced in all the jaw parts of it. Oh my god. This is actually fairly appropriate for us, since seeing as the, the mythical sea people supposedly brought about the end of the Bronze Ages. This is, uh... This is doing quite nice, huh? Give me some gold, some prestige, and I'd like some uh, some prisoners, if nothing else. That's really what we were here for, so that we could start sacrificing. See if we actually managed to get some. I mean, we will have just got some through the virtue of warfare. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. This is what we're after. Okay. I'll take the lot. By which I mean, they will die now. Oh! Stress level three, why? Just? Just? <laughs> I like that it doesn't warn you then if you do a mass execution. My god, we've got 3,953 piety though. Shit. Um, I guess it would be just. So this is a valid strategy. 
but she is like she's doing everything for her religion and it's breaking her mentally oh god yep there we go we gained the devotion level but holy shit it is uh oh my god i can't do this i just can't do this i can't be arch priestess one moment longer her justice and her compassion goes against her religious doctrines how did how does anyone ever manage this seething mass of stress no matter how little I let my pride get in the way of my duty, I still feel as though I'm being consumed by my own hubris. It is clear I will never be good enough to rule. Something's got to give. Two, something's got to give. Three, something's got to give. Uh, don't look at me. She's getting scoffophobic. Uh, she doesn't like being looked at. Okay. She gains reclusive, which I believe was a... Uh, did we not have the option to take that on as a, um, a virtue at some stage? Okay. My flesh for forgiveness. Oh, for the holy flesh of the werewolf woman. Flagellant. Wounded. One-eyed. 60 stressed down. Boom. I will trade an eye for forgiveness. My god. Unlike Lassie, who grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. Poor Pug is gonna just be taken apart piece by piece. Let's quickly hold a grand right. Because those are very good for dealing with stress, right? So let's, let's read, from a, read, read from a grimoire. We've done the grand offering. We're back to the start now. Uh, whatever will lower stress as much as possible. There. Laugh, drink, dance. Enjoy her blessings. Minus 48 stress. Oh, God. It wasn't that much. Ooh. <laughs> um, flagellate. Severely injured. Uh, she can survive it. If anybody can survive it, it's a little pug. Oh, my God. She, this poor woman. It's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> I always said we wouldn't have peace with this character to try and avoid the obesity epidemic, but I think, depending on how far down we can get our stress level with a hunt, we'll, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, Labadia or Nereus. Uh, 15 learning versus 9 learning and him being very evil. Um, I think we'll go with you then if that's all right. Guards, get the rebel out of my hunting grounds or no, a donation should keep them away for long enough. We gain aided peasants and we gain 100 piety from that, as is our main job in life thank you treat our wounds okay <laughs> fixed whatever's left of us at this point we're gonna have to have a feast we're still on stress level one here and we need the fertility to try and get that perfect kid do it send the invitations what else have we got here does anything else give um fertility minus 25 because we're severely injured stress level is reducing our fertility immortal infertility is reducing our immortality uh, our fertility as well Shit, we've got to be careful here. Okay, don't worry about that. I, I didn't mean to expose the secret. That's my bad. My half-brother, uncle, and charioteer. Whoops. You learn of Lassie Lucanthropos' disputed heritage secret. Our father's spreading family gossip as if he's fucking one to talk. I find myself in deep conversation with my unsuccessful half-brother, Labradoodle. He inquires about sword practice, not you too. Is this, is this a double entendre, or are we just, uh... Are we actually talking about sword practice i'm more interested in you look at the muscles on you you've got a nice bounce to your step uh, as my guest departs i'm pleased to say that the feast was successful i have my husband Anthuastos, to thank for much of its success thank you Anthuastos. very cool given that she i mean i don't think she is uh can she even see where she's going right now she's got one massively swollen eye and uh no other eye <laughs> <laughs> and still, I'd like to point out she can absolutely destroy you in a fist fight. But like anatomical studies followed by like washing her hands. Because if she's a flagellant, the chance of infection here is 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 through the fucking roof, huh? Um Tax woman or cutting cornerstone. Seeing as we are building temples on every flat surface that doesn't have a temple on it, probably not too bad. Thicker than water. Oh god Jesus, you know what else is thicker than water? That's right, the labyrinth is fucking coating on every flat surface. I'm just saying, don't take a black light down there. Ah, speaking of which, my husband, High King Amphuastos, will be proud. We are Pergonant. We lost the trait one eyed. It fucking grew back? Wow. Is that another side effect of the immortality? That's quite overpowered. Just the just the aging alone would have been good. My god, but it also turns out she heals, like, incredibly well. Oh, and of course we've got the mystical communion because we're a wise woman. We've got so many different kind of... You know, we've got the witch coven, we've got the pilgrimages, we've got the the communions. We've got so much to, uh, to, to kind of... Methods of exploring the gods, let's put it that way. Um, Kalados could help me study the text for 50 piety. I want whatever gives the highest... Ah! 
The heretic filth should burn. We get a hundred piety and the choice may download the path of, of, of zealousness. This is the only option. The, the heretics will burn. A tiny child. The floaty daughter. Oh, God. She's even worse. Jello. More like hell no. What have we got? Affen pincher. I don't know what the hell an affen... What the hell? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> affen pincher. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. Where are my keys on this gear? There we are. Avon Pinch. It's probably touch typing. All it takes. All it takes is being slightly over to the left and everything's fucked. Okay. May you grow strong and wise, my daughter. You won't. You won't grow that. Well, I mean, strong, sure. But wise? She's a little bit. She's a little bit not, not all there upstairs. Side effects, I guess, of the um, slightly diminished bloodline right now. Ah, the white boar. Maybe this will be finally a character to actually catch the bloody white boar, because I've never done it in CK3. I don't think I've done it a couple of times in CK2. Oto, my father, half-brother, and friend, is helping me forget about the troubles of the world. Be careful with him. Just saying. He's, he's a, 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 a wily gentleman, for lack of a better term. Okay, um, we're not going for open-minded, because we know where that leads this dynasty. Restraint. Yeah, that's a bit more fucking appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Learning lifestyle experience. Exiting the temple in Thracia, me and my father turned to end up in the company of some local merchants. They are middle of discussion regarding theology and worldly wealth. Are you not in the labyrinth? He is in the labyrinth. I guess he's our like uh, I guess he's our advisor, our liaison to perhaps our grandmother, who is well and truly locked away. We'll convince him that her face dust has given us signs. Uh, I know somewhere where gold would come to better use. No, okay, that's fine. Building a house of worship. The temple of Thracia against building house of worship. That sounds cool. Where is that? Um, it's over here. Temple of... Uh, I mean, it's pointing somewhere vaguely over here, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, is it somewhere within our realm? I have no idea where that is. Well, it's somewhere. I can tell you that much. Another child. Another chance of that good kid. We've got... Oh, all of our temples are built, have they? And we've got one there. Uh, nope. We've got one temple, in fact. Well, I guess the others we want our vassal... Of a vassal rams, right? Um, let's build a monastery for you right there, and then we'll grant it to any old low noble. Don't really give that much of a shit. Right, so I'm going to start from the top of the island here and work our way down and upgrade basically what we can, where we can. My lady, this search of yours for a mere beast, I have to admit it worries me. My court chaplain, Caldinius, approaches me as I sift through reports of new sightings of the white boar. Mind your freaking business. What would you know? Big stinky monk man. Evidently, anything that demands such attention could be seen could be sent by blight as if its existence is not a sign of Apollon itself. Is the boar a messenger of Apollon? Is it none of our business, or are we saying you're right? What have I been thinking? Now, is it a, 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 a what we're, we've got to ask ourselves here? Is it a messenger from Apollon that we have to hunt and kill, or is it just a, like a like an aspect? What are you going on about? Oh my God, we didn't even convince him. Gotta be careful doing that. Oh my god, this kid's not even smart. You stupid animal. Speaking of stupid animal, how about, uh, wh what about, uh, that's all my list is. Afghan Hound, which is just an absurd name to give to my tiny child. Afghan Hound. I don't know if they're particularly smart or not, but may go strong and wise, my son. We we've already established, not gonna fucking happen. I could do with some more prisoners. We've got our stress level down now. I think it's time to really bring about another attack from the sea people. Where are your clothes? Oh, he's Kemetic. Kemetic people, of course, don't wear clothes by, uh... I mean, obviously, the reason the Kemetic people in Egypt don't wear clothes is because it's fucking hot. This guy's just doing it for a lifestyle. I mean, it's still obviously hot in Greece, but probably not, like, Sahara hot. Oh, you're under Robert Baratheon. Can't attack you. What about Mykena? Can't attack you. You know, for sea people, we have an awful distinct lack of Cassus Belli. We we'll attack the same fucking dude again. What about around here? Yes, within range. Raiding expedition. Raid the troops. In Herbalist. Oh, well, that seems appropriate for our lifestyle. Okay, more than happy about that. Oh, I mean, we're just collecting them all at this stage, right? The wise woman, theologian, herbalist, scholar. This is going to be quite fun when we when we get the lot. It's going to be like the most learning characters in existence. And to be fair, we've got some fucking competition. Was it one of the Akkadians who had that absolutely insane learning bonus? Another pregnant. Excellent. And these guys want to give us gold. As I look at fear in my almost empty coffers, my herald announces that former vassals have arrived. We come bearing gold, my liege, a donation to defeat our enemies, King Odalucas announces. With me, I bring the elegant Fru Prucian Theseus, 
the gracious Numqua Ka- uh, Fucking hell. Yeah. We are- we only ask for you to lead us in victory. I welcome all of your generosity. Um, you are too generous, but I cannot accept. I'm afraid I cannot accept. And they get an opinion of us for turning down their money, even though this is quite blatantly a bribe. And it's a bribe I'm absolutely going to accept. Patreon.com slash Roll1D2Games. <laughs> New Lassie. It's a, such a fucking cursed name, though. Lassie of Karit. Genius, Amazonian, and Comley. I, you know what? I think of all the kids so far, not for Kun though, but out of all the kids so far, that may be the best one we've got so far. You're going to be called, that's right, Airedale Terrier. May you go strong and wise, my daughter, Airedale Terrier. It occurred to me, we've got two series on the channel simultaneously where we have people turning into animals. Now, I'd like to say that it's purely coincidence. I, I know nothing about uh, furry subculture. Um, and again, it is just, it's just something that is naturally uncovered. Uh... <clears throat> and I apologize basically if anyone's offended by anything I say. Uh, <laughs> my steward, he will sort this. Yeah, please tidy my channel, steward. For God's sake, get us back on track. Put that man 240 gold to find a boar quicker. This boar better be freaking gilded. I better cut into it and, and just pure diamonds erupt from it. Uh, so I got 82%. I'm just trying to stick to siege in kind of smaller areas to start off with. Just so that we can maximize the amount of prisoners we pull in. Because I didn't realize that the, um... Despite the fact that we're going raiding, we're actually only here to bring back gold. Which I guess is obviously the point of raiding. But I wanted it more for captives than the gold. Like, when we're not... When we don't have our ridiculous army raised, we haven't got to worry about, um... Ooh. Path of Cynicism. Absolutely fucking not. Absolutely not. I, I, I wanted to maximize prisoner gathering. So I guess we'll push them to 100% and just keep fucking raiding. I guess. There's no reason not to. Another child. God, they are coming thick and fast. Like, our oh, husband. Consecrated, fecund, hail, intelligent, and beautiful. You will be known as, I have no idea what the hell an Akbash is. Akbash, what are you? Okay. <clears throat> if you're interested, dogtime.com slash dogbreed slash uh, Akbash. A rare purebreed dog from, from Turkey. Oh, that's appropriate given where we're raiding right now. Pooches go by several other names, including Koban... Kopegi, Akbash Shoban Kopechi, and Akbash Dog. Akbash Dog is actually so much better. There you are. Make her strong and wise, my daughter. Dog's her middle name. Uh! It is not escape my notice that my nephew, Prukian Kapanius, is a very good looking man. My fucking nephew is a what now? Prukian Kapanius. I thought Kapanius was his last name, and I generally thought we'd had a kid from a different dynasty. But his full name is Prukian. Oh, Prukian is like, um, like Count, right? Right, okay, that's good. Let's get the life out of me there for a second. It's a very good looking man. The way he smiles and narrows his eyes because he's fucking pissed off of his damn mind all the time never fails to make my heart flutter. Are these normal feelings to have towards a nephew? Or oh, he is my nephew. Get a grip, pug. Um, yeah, get a freaking grip, for God's sake. Didn't choose that restraint trait for you to be... Oh! Oh, Uinos is here. With my mind set on a relaxing evening, I am heading for my grandfather Uinos' chamber with some tea and a chess set. Without knocking, I push the door open. Uinos is seated by his desk writing furiously. Right, because long as he's only writing, knowing this dynasty. As I clear my throat, he jumps out of his skin. He quickly stuffs a roll of parchment into his pocket and turns towards me with an uneasy look on his face. What are you... What are you hiding? Show me at once. Return later and search his chambers in secret or respect his privacy. You know what? He could just be holding a diary about how upset he is about the fact that his wife and child decided to get into a relationship. You know what, Grandfather? You're probably about the only untainted man in this whole dynasty. Respect. 204. A mischievous smile is playing on his lips. I know I've had to strangers of late, and for that I apologize, but I have a good reason. Yuanos gestures me to follow and leads me to the courtyard. Sat on his horse and dressed for travel is Toto, our father. I've arranged a little trip for the two of you, you and I say. I thought you could use some quality time together. Oh, Arranging some family activities for his... His son and his granddaughter. Who I guess, technically, he would be more related to than... A regular grandchild. Now that you think about it. Because it's his wife's son and his son's... Sorry, his wife's daughter and his son's daughter. Right? Oh, is he less or... No, he'd be equally... No, 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 no. I don't know. The genetics are very confusing. Um, thank you, you and us. We're still his grandchild at the end of the day, ultimately. Um, that's very nice of you. 
That was uh, like I said. I genuinely think out of all the characters we've got in this entire series, my favorite so far is is you and us. He really is. He's just been an incredible guy through and through. Betrayed at every turn by vile characters. Children are vile. His wife was vile. He's just a nice guy, you know? He's just a nice guy who wants to smith things and build things and love life. And apparently wear a friggin' pan on his head. Be more like you and us, everybody. Be more like you and us. Thank you all for watching. I don't know what the hell's going on in this series. I feel like I've feel like I've lost track of things somewhat. Thank you to our executive producers over on Coffee for making the channel possible for the final few months over here on Coffee before we jump platforms once again. Never again, I promise. Thank you to Hoopaloop, Jobo Daddy, Out of All Context, Daedric Dai, Katana, Voodoo Mumbo, Salentali, Tom, PC, Alla, Bokbin, and Potative for their support at the Executive Producer Tears over on Coffee, along with everybody over at the Executive Producer Tears on Coffee for keeping the channel going. Thank you to you guys, and a thank you as well to Jack Black Sheep, Eckle Cakes, Hero Club, Shatulski, Archbishop, Blood Riot, Kamikaze, James B, Smurtworm, Glupa Fruit Hag Don, Afanifus, Dinosius, the Esoteric, and Flobubba 2. Thank you guys. See you all tomorrow for some adventures of more of these terrible family members with the exception of you and us and maybe our current character pog